Hey everybody, Professor Klein here to bring another video on the sperm pathway. All right, we got two models here and this is a testes model. You can see half of it is covered. The other half is open so you can see the inside of the testes with the epididymis on top. Now, the first thing you gotta know is this is where the testes is over here. Two testes, epididymis on top. This is where sperm is produced. However, you got to get specific with it because inside the testes, there are these squiggly tubules lined up in different lobules called the seminiferous tubules. This is where sperm is produced. But let's zoom in one more to look inside a seminiferous tubule. All right, here we are inside a seminiferous tubule. And you can see there's a lumen and then all these cells on the outside, a bunch of different cells that produce sperm. But what you need to know is that sperm start out here and as they mature, they go further and further in to the lumen and then down this tube. This would be similar to this model right here. Oh, it's the paper towel model. If this is representing a seniferous tubule, Sperm would start out here, mature, mature, and then go down through the seminiferous tubule. So think tubule, back to here. Here's the seminiferous tubule, squiggly, right? Squiggly, 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 and then all of a sudden it gets straight. These are called the straight tubules, and they lead over to something called the reti testes. See this junction or this hub? where all the straight tubules go. This is called the reti testes. And it's the last location before it jumps over to the epididymis. But these lines here are also straight, but they have a different name. They're called the efferent ductules. Efferent ductules. Now that leads out to the head, the body, and the tail of the epididymis. That's where you store and mature sperm. Then the sperm during an ejaculation would travel out this tube. Now it's red, but this is not a blood vessel. This is the vas deferens, vas deferens. And it's cut off right here, but let's pick the vas deferens up over here. See the testes, epididymis, and the vas deferens coming up here. Now it comes all the way up into the posterior aspect of the bladder and the prostate and this other honeycomb looking thing called the seminal vesicle or seminal gland. So along the way, sperm is going to have fluid secreted into this tube. So we see the vast difference coming down. Don't get it confused with this tube. This is the ureter going into the bladder coming down from the kidneys. And if we look at the other side, you can see the ureter coming down and the other, whoops, there it is, the other vas deferens wrapping around. So that's what we're looking at here with the seminal vesicle and the prostate all secreting fluid and sperm plus the ejaculate fluid equals semen. But let me pop this off so we can see the final steps of where sperm would travel. This little duct here, connecting the vas deferens to the urethra is called the ejaculatory duct. I'm gonna zoom in on it. It's a really small duct. Here's a picture of it on your screen. One on the right, one on the left. The ejaculatory duct goes into what's called the prostatic urethra the part of the urethra within the prostate. Then you get to the membranous urethra, crossing these membranes. And there's another really small gland right here called the bulbo urethral gland, aka Cowper's gland, which secretes a little bit more fluid. And then finally, once you reach the corpus spongiosum and the corpus cavernosum, you're in the penis or the root of the penis, and now it's the spongy urethra all the way out. Check out this linked 
a video if you want a full overview of what's going on in the male reproductive model right here but this is just a demo just a presentation video on the pathway of sperm and that concludes this video thanks for watching